Greetings! Oh, what is up and a very warm welcome to the channel. The sun is hiding, the storm is pounding, and the magpie is casting. I come at you guys right now with a live one versus one battle, fresh from the top of the ladder, featuring a spawning in the north, playing as the Overcommand West pieces. It is going to be Full Mean Machine, who, uh, as far as I know, is a newcomer to the channel. You know what? I don't think I've ever stopped and read the signs on the OKW base. Feld, Feld Befals Corps Panzer Grenadiers and various other signage. Zubahur, Punkt. Hmm, interesting. Um, and, <laughs> sorry, I got totally distracted there. Spawning in the South, controversially, going to be playing as the Partisan Doctrine. As the Soviet pieces, it's going to be Old Mate, um, who also, I believe, is new to the channel. So, wow, Partisan Doctrine. I mean, that basically already means that this is going to be a pretty interesting game, at least from my point of view. Because uh, it's not every day we get to see Partisan, and uh, I think this is one of the more interesting and certainly more transformational commanders in the game. Something of a commander with a storied past, of course. Um, those of us who've been following Company of Heroes 2 for some time will remember um, the antics with which Von Ivan and various others um, got up to with this commander. There was a time when this one was dominating the meta uh, for various reasons. The uh, sp spawn Partisans out of building thing. Um, was basically instant death to any Vermax sniper, and when Vermax snipers were a very important part of the meta some time ago, um, that was a very important ability to have, and the spawn Panzerzan tank hunters, um, that was basically a free last hit um, on, on a Panzer IV or anything like that, as long as it was like anywhere near a building or had to retreat anywhere near a building. Basically, uh, if you went for s a sort of T70 and or Maxim spam into partisan abuse, your uh, your Vermax opponent would be in for a very difficult game. And, uh, I mean, gone are those days, thank goodness, probably, because whilst it was fun to watch the first few times, um, it, it did get a bit tiring, and you did kind of get the impression that units like German armor or various German armor, and certainly the German marksmen, weren't really balanced with... Um, partisan doctrine in mind in its old form now you know that was years ago and uh, partisan doctrine may well be very different so let's quickly have a look here we've got radio intercept which i'm sure we're all quite familiar with that's just one of those which is it is undoubtedly useful and good players are probably able to get some pretty decent edges thanks to this ability but it's hard to quantify the impact that this ability um has in, in a single game especially as an observer you just don't really know in what way uh, the player is using that information early kubelwagen white here going down special rifle command does give access to the clown car and that has traditionally been the trump the very early game trump card for a kubelwagen so uh yeah pretty much going as expected there old mate getting a getting off to a nice start in this game so then we've got the Partisan Troops, um, who I believe they come out with anti-infantry weapons, it says. I mean, Time Wars, they used to come out with PPSHs and be really good with them. Um, and Time Wars Partisan Tank Hunters used to come out with a Shrek and a Tank Grenade, um, the ability to use that. So we're going to have to see if that's still the case. It just says that they come equipped with German anti-vehicle weapons. So interesting stuff there. We've also got Spy Network, using the underground infiltration units, temporarily reveal all enemy units on the minimap. 50 munitions for 15 seconds. Interesting. Um, so it's kind of like a recon overflight, only it's perfect information, it can't be shot down, it sees everywhere instead of just a certain area, um, and it's 50 munitions. So, I mean, that, that, that does seem strong. Uh, that seems like it could definitely be useful, but again, one of those where um, it's going to be hard to quantify the impact that it's having. So I guess, hopefully, we'll be able to see the cooldown on this one refreshing when it's used. So we'll be able to see exactly how much use, if any, Old Mate is uh, making of this ability. And um, hopefully then we'll be better placed to judge exactly how much value it's provided him in this game. And we've got Mark Vehicle, which is just ever useful. One of Just one of the more useful generalist Soviet abilities to have. Um, it can be super useful for cobbling together the kill on whatever piece of Axis armor is being a thorn in your side. And... Uh, that is usually, I mean, usually at at least one point in the game, a piece of Axis armor is going to be being a thorn in your side. So, there we go. Looks like Full Mean Machine is also going to go ahead, go ahead and pick their commander at a relatively early juncture here, and it's going to be the Elite Armor Doctrine. So we're going to have access to the 221 Command Scout Car, um, and I wonder if this is somewhat in response to the fact that we've got a Special Rifle Command opening here. Not quite sure. Marksman being mixed into the roster here for Old Mate, so beginning to bust some Axis skulls with high accuracy and precision uh, are these Soviet forces. Clown Car is now fully operational, Flammenwerfer 
ready to burninate some some Germans with that. Oh, there we go. So yeah, the 2-2-1 is on the queue now. The entire German army right now in disarray and falling back. Who are these on the fallback path? Looks like Penal Battalion here, looking to just get some extra damage on falling back squads. That is nice. This uh, There's a one-man squad here, which is being pursued by a clown cart. It seems dubious that there'll be a squad wipe opportunity here. Um, and uh, I, indeed, he's going to escape just fine. Okay, cool. But uh, always nice to be able to route your opponent in the opening minutes of the game, and that is going to result in a landslide of field control. Um, a landslide of sort of map control victory here for the Soviet player in the early stages of this game. Or to be able to secure, um, well, I was going to say secure double muni or double fuel, but actually the way they're positioned on this map, there's no Soviet units that can immediately access that. So, may not be able to do that with this bubble of time, but we'll see. 2 2 one here, going to announce his presence on the field, so old mate will know what commander he's up against here. Um, so, of course, this one can't actually upgrade to get the... Um, the auto cannon on top so this this will never become a 222 the only upgrade of course is the expensive but incredibly useful fug radio set um so that's almost a shame really because that that auto cannon would be super useful against this clown car but um anyway even without that the 221 going to be super useful for policing infantry and um and a useful source of damage onto this clown car not being super aggressive with the clown car actually not really sharking around looking for targets i suppose you know right now that all of your opponent's units are on the doorstep of their base and quite concentrated not optimal conditions for a clown car to flourish you really want to find sort of lone flanking infantry units and harass and punish them um so <clears throat> old mate here just declining to be super active with that unit and that kind of makes sense <clears throat> um, yeah, both players just proceeding to navigate the early stages of this game. I mean, barring the loss of that Kubel wagon, this has been a relatively uneventful uh, opener here. Up to three squads, Volks, uh, with the 2 2 1. Pretty standard stuff. Looks like Battle Group HQ will be the tech of choice for our Overcommand player. We'll see if they're going to make a choice out of that building. Um, or if they're just going to proceed directly straight into Schwerpanzer HQ. Um, we will see. Uh, despite suffering early setbacks and loss of map control, full B machine has maintained control over this fuel point, so um, the teching speed, the teching velocity, relatively unimpeded, given that, given, given that they did go off to a bad start. Okay, 2-2-1 coming in for something of a dive here. Gonna get the marksman. Oh, oh sorry. Gonna get the marksman. There he is. Um, so that's an amazing pickup there for Full Moon Machine. Beginning to uh, make this special rifle command look a little bit less good. Uh, some kind of a mine there, gonna fall up, we're gonna make these uh, Storm Piners, that's two models picked off there, so that's pretty useful, pretty pretty significant damage. Uh, so, Kettenwerfer getting mixed into the roster here, providing additional anti-armor, whoa, a squad of Volks have been lost here somewhere as well. Oh, I totally missed that. Goodness me. <laughs> it's, what, what time is it? Hang on. Okay, it's, it's half past three and it's already been a long day. I've been sat at my desk crunching numbers and going over spreadsheets for like six hours solid now so you'll have to excuse me if my eyes are a little square um i am feeling a little dazed um i'm going out in like just over an hour so don't worry i'm going to experience sunlight and do some actual physical moving around today oh wow ptrs is in the clown car make short work of the 221 nice not often you see a, 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 a ptrs drive by uh, but showing it off to good effect there, and these players just trading blows right now. Nobody uh, holding on to the roster or the force composition that they uh, that they wanted to go with. So we're going to have to see where these two players are going to navigate the game. Crucially now, Old Mate does have access to both the Partisans and the Partisan Tank Hunters. So um, I Full Mean Machine will not, will not know what commander they're up against yet. There's been no convincing evidence. But as soon as some partisans start busting out of buildings, we're going to see. So the initial partisan squads are the most shocking because, of course, the German player is the least prepared for them. Um, and those are often the ones that will pick off um, key units. So we're going to have to see if that's going to be the way that these uh, these partisans go. Replacing that third squad of Volks right now is Full Moon Machine. Going to be getting a T-70 here is Old Mate. That, of course, tells us that the Tank of the Battalion Command has finished. So there are Soviet tech tree shake it, shaping up with... Uh, you know, pretty standard pace right now. <clears throat> Taking a look at the scoreline, uh, there is a slight lead here for the OKW player, so that's nice to have about 45 tickets in it right now. Uh, nothing to write home about. Going to replace the marksman, his old mate. Risky. That is a lot of manpower you've now thrown in the way of marksmen. 720. Um, 
but I mean this is clearly a style that old mate is comfortable playing uh, this is a really good example by the way of just a a um, support weapon campanile less build because um, I, I feel like this composite <clears throat> pardon me I feel like this composition is actually quite effective um, and has been through all stages of this game and we haven't had to rely on any uh, special rifle uh, support weapon campanile units so nice to see uh, penal battalion having their having their time in the sunlight here having their moment on the stream they're such an underutilized unit to be honest I mean they're so good six man squad comes with SVDs and nice upgrade options they're just really cool the demo charges are just a very cinematic tense exciting thing to have in the game so I do like those. MG34 has been added into the roster here for Full Mean Machine. And finally, this represents some diversification. This represents tech, pretty much, this MG. And this is going to be the, the dominating factor now in most of these fights moving forward. No indirect fire solution for the Soviet forces right now. And uh, no, no real effective counter to this MG other than the Marksman, which um, is quite good, but forced to take an engagement head on right now. So we'll see how that goes. STGs appearing on these Volks, and they're going to be able to shove these penals onto their own satchel charge. Jeez. I think that was supposed to be a satchel charge retreat, but they got so snared up on the retreat by being blocked by uh, um, Volksgrenadier models that those penal battalions nearly fell foul of their own explosives. That would have been a yikes moment for the Soviet player. But he's going to get out of there with that squad. Marksman in jeopardy here, bravely not falling back. I love the snow models. They're so cool. That is a Soviet marksman if I ever saw one. Clown car here still uh, sort of actually coming in for a bit of a dive here. Bravely trying to get up on top of this Kettenwerfer. That is so risky. Why have we got engineers with a metal detector in this thing? Is he just out here sweeping for mines with a mobile metal detector? I get the feeling that old mate is like just a veteran and seasoned hand at playing these special rifle command weird commander openings. Like I'm just seeing him use clown cars in just highly uncommon but actually pretty sensible ways. So by, by rolling this thing around the map he's going to detect any mines. And that just gives him such a degree of sort of security when it comes to moving this T-70 around. Um, if the clown car hits some mines, big whoop. But if the T-70 hits some mines, I mean, that actually represents a proper fuel cost. So, I quite like this. It's... You just don't often see this pairing, and it's exciting, actually. It's pretty cool. Uh, old mate here doing something new. Still yet to use his partisans. So, got those... Got those in the pocket. Spy network now also available, so keep your eyes down on this button. If you see that one on cooldown, then we know old mate is using his map hacks. And, uh, wow, the OKW player right now forced into a tiny pocket. Has he just forgotten about these Volks? Hmm, not quite sure what these Volks are up to. Uh, that is, there we go. They're finally going to get some orders. Uh, he desperately needs to secure his fuel. I would say that has to be the priority. And beyond that, getting his boots on one of these VPs will be nice because he's beginning to slide now. Uh, about 50 tickets behind the uh, Soviet player. So this last phase of play has definitely been dominated by the Red Army. And uh, that's that's pretty scary. But there's a Puma coming out here. Whoa, jeez, that was a lot of mines. Holy, that double minefield there. Just massacring a load of Volks. That's going to mean that these squads have to spend probably another at least 40 seconds off the line. Uh, plus the manpower cost of the units, of course. That's very annoying. Um, so here comes the Puma. Of course, that means that the Mechanized Regiment has finished. Um, so Puma Ho. Puma Ho. And that's quite good. I mean, the Puma obviously checks both the T-70 and the Scout Car. Liable to kill either of them relatively rapidly. Where is this Kettenworth though? Oh, it's actually not in the fight right now. But um, Anti-Vehicle Grenade is going to... Oh, sorry, Panzerfaust, I should say. Going to donk the engine on the T-70. That T-70 now stricken, but still pushing. Flamethrower is back in the clown car, looking for pressure. Going to try and hound down this Volk squad. Here comes the Puma, though, angling in. Actually gets revealed by Penals, so that's less than optimal because the Penals have a PTRS, which can counter that or, or, or help anyway. But, oh, dear, this will be a dead T-70. There's just nothing here, is there? Nothing here to help it. So that's going to be an easy pickup for the light cat here. Boom, there it goes. And now the, now the clown car also in jeopardy. Oh, dear. So this is, this Puma has gone off to a lovely start in life. That will be a star of veterancy more or less immediately onto this unit, you have to feel. Whoa, the turret reverse speed is sort of getting its way. There we go. Okay, a quick burst of machine gun fire, and that will see a star of veterancy on that one. So we're pretty close. Map hacks are being used right now. So... Whoa, hang on. He's been teching fast. Of course he has. He's had double fuel for quite a little bit, actually. He's going to re-secure double fuel. Oh, I mean, this is the kind of chokehold that makes games look pretty bleak, to be honest. Full Mean Machine needs to do something, and fast. We've got 
we've got mechanized armor camp and iron we've got the first t34 coming out ordinarily i'd be skeptical if this game was was even or balanced i i, I would say i'd be skeptical of a t34 at this timing because you're, you're building a t34 into an opponent who already has a puma who already has a kettenwerfer and you know who might have option of additional pumas and things like that but when you've had a stranglehold on the fuel like old mate has had in this game Actually, that actually makes the T-34 spam route look really appealing, because you know your opponent can't really afford a second Puma, and they certainly can't afford to tech into Schwer Panzer HQ or anything like that. So if you can get up to two or three T-34s, then, as we saw in a fairly recent game on the channel, the value of Pumas and uh, Rakettenwerfers starts to tail off a little bit, because you just identify which of your T-34s that is taking the damage, which one's taking the hits or being focused, and you pull it back. And your opponent has to sort of wear down the health of like multiple T-34s before they have a chance of killing one, all things being microed correctly. So, okay, Partisans coming out. They are, they can, okay, they're just going to be over here. I'm not really sure what they, if they were sprung out to do anything special, but yep, that's where they're going to be. Uh, Axis forces desperately trying to retake this fuel, and they will be able to do that soon. The fuel differential has been almost four to one in the Red Army's favor for some time now. And that is dire. These Axis forces are beleaguered. They are outnumbered. Uh, but the army for Old Mate, for all that, is still relatively fragile. Marksmen can die very quickly. Engineers are relatively spineless in a fight. Partisans die very quickly. One of the squishiest units in the game. They just have very low defense. Um, so this army is really being held together on the strength of this T-34. He's going for a Katusha? Not what I expected. That seems risky. I don't think I like the Katusha. I think if you're, this T-34, in my opinion, is really only valuable if you can get another one out on the field. And if you're going to stop at one T-34, well, one Puma will, will handle one T-34. Oh, dear. This is what I was worried about. And a Katusha just represents a sweet target for a um, for a Puma as well. So I don't actually like this Katusha. I think it needed to be a T-34. In any case, um, this T-34 is dead. So that's a rough... That's a rough... Ru no. Okay, here we go. There we go. There goes the hit. For a second there, I thought that T-34 was somehow going to limp away, but there we go. The Puma will complete the kill on that one. And now I think things are looking pretty okay for Old Mate. He's managed to take out that T-34 somehow using his Kettenwerfer, using his Puma, which basically were the only answers he had. Um, now we find ourselves in a world where the Soviet player, ahead on tech, ahead on resources, ahead in the scoreline, but has actually lost lost, lost their real... Has lost, what, 70 fuel worth of their, of their lead? I always forget how much T-70s are. Sorry, T-34s are. 90 fuel. There we go. I'll get it. Yeah, t 70s are T-70. Anyway. So here comes the T-34. The second T-34. Light gun getting added into the roster here for Full Mean Machine, who... This army is just starting to look more sophisticated. It is starting to look better composed and more balanced. He has access to an MG. He has access to indirect fire. He has the Kettenwerfer and the Puma for heavy... Or should I say dedicated AT. Um, so... So that's pretty nice. Here comes the T-34, though. Can he catch this Puma out? Okay, gets a hit. Remember, we have smoke on this Puma yet to pop. There it goes. Oh, no. That, that's like a really... Oh, he stops the T-34. What are we doing? Oh, he could see through? Okay, I didn't realize he could actually see through that. So he should stay for one more shot into that into that Puma. Uh, but Volks here going to tag a, tag a grenade on. Uh, sorry, a Panzerfaust on. And this Rakettenwerfer actually significantly preventing the T-34 from coming forward and taking that one out. So there's a chance that this Puma may actually get repaired. Storm Plan is on it. Oh, no. He's just going to have to let that Puma go. Go. Oh, no. That feels so bad. Okay, here comes some Penal Battalion. A demo charge would do this. Machine gun gets set up to cover, though. Okay, they're going to... Oh, of course, they have PTRSs. Lol. So the PTRS is going to do the trick. Puma gets denied. All right. Well, I think that puts Old Mate back in the driving seat, but only just. This game's looking a little bit more balanced. This last phase of play has been a story of redemption for Full Mean Machine. Despite losing the Puma, this game looks so much more even now. Regrabs the third squad of Volks. Not sure where they died again. Whoops, sorry. Magpie casting for the win. Uh, looks like third squad of Penal is going to be added onto the roster here for Old Mate, so... I think we're going to see a relatively stable mid-game come out of this, really, because, I mean, a T-34 is not an insurmountable advantage, but... Um, and you also can't really close the game particularly fast with this army, so I believe with one with one fuel and at least one victory point secured for Full Mean Machine, we should eventually see Schwer Panzer HQ Tech. I mean, I, w I would I would be surprised if we didn't see it in this game at some point. Um, this commander doesn't really flourish until you have Panzer authorization and are able to take units from that building. So, um, I mean, it does provide a lot of value to Pumas, but it's 
it's it's not at its best unless you can get that the top tier of uh, overcommand tech. T34 here, getting the flank on the MG, getting up on top of this uh, Kettenwerfer. Oh, come on, mouse. Middle mouse scrolling in this game has just like long since decided that it's going to be my enemy. <laughs> and uh, I guess I'm at peace with that. Combat going on in mid as well. Looks like mixed skirmishes. These penals putting in a good account of themselves, though. Six-man squads, SVDs thundering. So uh, the question is, then, are we going to see... I mean, old mate is actually floating a lot of manpower. Um, are we going to see save for... So what are his options now? Right now? Get a Katusha, get another T-34. So he, as I say, he's going to pick that. Um, or, I mean, save for SU-85. This is premature for an SU-85. You can definitely fit in this T-34 before you require a tank hunter here. Puma is going to be replaced. Wow. So actually opting not to go for Schwer Panzer HQ. Feels like he needs a Puma to stay in this game right now, just full mean machine. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of what I would call a life support Puma insofar as you're buying it to not lose the game. But I think, I think in a way, these life support Pumas have a way of losing you the game. I mean, you're not going to die in the next five or ten minutes, perhaps, but you often will find the game impossible to win after that is um the defensive doctrine what is it called the uh, the german the, there's a vermac doctrine who can call in pumas uh, mobile defensive doctrine that's the guy um mobile defensive doctrine i think like really epitomized this scenario where it's like german player vermac players were often taking that commander calling in a puma to stabilize in the short term but then without that fuel um and without the teching um, they were basically alive based on the presence of a very fragile puma and then if ever that puma died and it surely usually did uh, they were still losing the game so it was kind of a catch-22 it's like you kind of feel priced into taking the puma so that you don't die but if you're taking the puma like what does the game have to look like where you win from that point like it's pretty you're looking for some pretty exceptional circumstances Ligon here gets caught flat out here t34 is going to gun down the crew on that uh, not the most impactful kill. That can, of course, just be remands. There was very little veterans he lost on that unit. But, you know, finding damage where he can get it. These, T2 th the, these two T-34s ranking up um, where they can, and that's nice. Um, even the Puma there getting hit by something, actually, going down to, like, just two-thirds of its health or so. And just the lock, the brutal lock being established by the Red Army. Using these partisans just to police the flanks, not in a direct combat role. Um, how much uh, unit cap are these? So they're only four, so they are relatively cheap to keep in your roster. Actually, eight for tank hunters. Um, but yeah, just having these guys... Ah, oh, so they're laying mines as well. Let's have a look at the abilities. So they can... They can, they, can, they can stealth, I noticed, so they will like blend into cover. That's pretty neat. So they've got the hold fire button as well. They can throw Molotovs. That's pretty neat. Uh, I mean, assuming you have the research, of course. They get the frag grenade, and they get the concussive trap. Place an explosive trap on a friendly point. When triggered, the explosion will temporarily stun infantrymen caught in the blast. That's very neat uh, for just 10 munitions as well. That's really cool. So, obviously you require Vet 1 for that, but I'd love to see it, and they can clearly place mines, because we've seen partisans, there we go, putting down mines all over the place. So, yeah, just using these uh, partisans to maintain control over the victory points at the flanks, and sort of place booby traps, and basically do partisan stuff. How cool is it that these units kind of, <coughs> they, they are the sneaky partisan units you, you would hope to see. It's groovy. Alright, whoa, another 2-2-1? Two, two, yeah. <coughs> not quite sure I understand full Mean Machine's decision making in this game. We're stacking quite a lot of fuel now. Mm, mean Machine has had control over this fuel point for some time. Oh, Puma here taking a fight against two T-34s. is going to kite back nicely. Get donked around a little bit, but it's okay for now. Mm, there's a Shrek up on these Panzer... Uh, uh, on these um, Storm Pioneers. So these T-34s have to be a little bit careful here. They don't want to take too much damage. Oh, the partisans just get, an, get a squad wipe. That was a mine plus PPSHs out of ambush. And that will be a dead squad of Volksgrenadiers. The partisans losing just one model and retreating for now. Nice work. Katusha on the field. So now I feel like all the advantages are to the Soviet player. The key advantages for Full Mean Machine were uh, the, the weapon teams, really. Like the machine guns and the like. And now that there's just a hard answer for those, this game just feels terribly, terribly in Soviet favour. Oh, yikes. Oh, no, not the Storm Pioneer. Oh, no. So unlucky. Just happened to be falling back. Single model Storm Pioneer and Full Mean Machine has seen enough. And can you blame him? 
Jeez, that was a rip-roaring game. <laughs> All right, old mate there putting together a really good showcase of um, support weapon Campanile-less play. And um, not not necessarily showcasing, but getting some good use out of a, a lesser spotted partisan commander. Clearly, there's still a lot of value in this commander. Clearly, it's still quite fun to play and quite pokey under the right circumstances. Um, and I very much hope to see more of this commander on the channel um, in the future. So I'm going to head out to the live games lobby and hopefully going to find another game to hop right into. And then whilst that one loads up, I'm going to grab myself a fresh drink because I'm nearly running dry here. <clears throat> so let's go and have a look at the lobby. I saw that Fahu was playing, so perhaps we can find him in a game. So we've got uh, Fores and some Soviet characters. We've got Ozgilath and Artem89, Felix, THM, I mean IT Band, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then some other people who... Then we sort of start going down the table and the quality starts decreasing. Um... So, we've basically got Vermac vs. Soviets on Kolodny Farm. That is the vanilla classic matchup of all time. Um, that is the, that is, this is the map and the matchup and the factions we've been playing since release. Or, we've got actually the same on Langriskaya. I sort of fancy... I sort of fancy the Kolodny Farm action. This is just... Oh! Looks like we've missed that one. Alright, so, well, let's just refresh the list briefly. Yeah, I think we're going to hop into this one on Langriskaya. I'm going to go and get myself a drink, so I will be back momentarily. Actually, chaps, now that I see we've got nearly, what, 1 minute 50 odd on the clock, I will say just go ahead and skip forward that. I'm not going to split this into two sections and then stitch it together because that basically impacts the overall quality of the video. And I like to keep it looking nice and crisp for those of you who like to watch it in 720 or 180. Um, so please just skip ahead like the next 90 seconds. Um, I'm just going to go to the kitchen and grab myself like a biscuit and a cup of tea, I think. Um, I will be back uh, just in time for the start of this game. But as I say, on the YouTube channel, please do feel free to skip ahead. <clears throat> Alrighty, welcome back everybody. Uh, so, game two on this, what are we on now, the 10th? Yeah, Monday the 10th of February. 
uh, spawning in the north, playing as the Soviet forces. It is going to be for Rez. The map here, as I do the long pan, is going to be Langriskaya. And spawning in the south, playing as the Red Vermacht. It's going to be... I want to say this is Russian. I think it's Russian. Seems Russian. Um, so I guess we're just going to call him Russian. But what usually happens is I make an assumption like this and then somebody who's much better informed and less ignorant corrects me in the comments to tell me uh, that it's actually like something else. It doesn't seem like Greek. Like I don't necessarily, I don't recognize this character, for example. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, Russian here is going to go ahead and pick um, Lightning War Doctrine. So... This actually seems like quite a smart one for the map. Jaeger Light Infantry upgrade is just super useful. Tactical movement also can be good. Relief Infantry, okay, we don't often see that one picked, but I'd love to see it. Tiger Tank, going to be great on this map. And Stuka Close Air Support, also going to be great on this map. Langriskaya, a map that is more prone than most to go into the super late game. Tiger Tank plus Stuka Close Air Support, a very potent commander not afforded by... A very potent, sorry, combination not afforded by many commanders. And so... This to me seems like a commander that's going to give your infantry some added poke. That's going to give them decent veterancy and enable them to compete through all phases of the game more advantageously. Uh, better maneuverability for those infantry for clutch situations. And then the combination of Tiger plus Stuka Close Air Support in the late game. Nice balance package. Good idea here by Russian, according to me. For Rez here, going to be going for... Um going to be going for so it's a rifle company opening special rifle company opening we've got a clown car out on the field so it's going to be um some sort of clown car based build here penal battalion um actually it's one penal one conscript so we are seeing a mix here um man see soviets just have so much different stuff they can do at like any stage in the game they can just play so many different styles it's great i just really like soviets right now i don't know what's up with me i've never felt like this fanboy -y towards any given faction but uh, they're just so interesting. Like, nobody else really has that much variety in opening game co um, compositions. Though I will say, Double Pioneer, Double MG42 is, like, relatively atypical. We're usually used to seeing some number of Grenadiers or Panzer Grenadiers on the field by now. Jeez, the, what's the damage on that? He just didn't miss a single round out of that barrage. Took off, like, half of this squad's health. Now he's on the chase here, looking to pick up this MG42, and that would be horrendous. You cannot be donating Soviet forces, especially Soviet forces who went for special rifle opening. You cannot be donating them an MG. Uh, oh, no! Okay, the MG goes down. It is under the arc of the base defense MGs. Oh, it gets swiped. He's going to lose the scout car for it, but that is horrend... Oh, my... No. He doesn't lose the scout... Oh, God. i got to be honest. I think if I was Russian... I might just have left the game and just said, you know what, I, I don't want to play a game where I've given my special rifle command opening Soviet opponent an MG42 at the sub four minute mark. Oh my god, that is such a headache. Oh. Okay, well, look in the top left, look in the top right, tell me whose army is best. <laughs> you can take some time and think about it if you want. That's brutal. All right. Well, this is the this is the timeline we find ourselves in. You know, it's early days yet. Although this is going to lead to probably quite a sweet early game for Forez. There's a world here in which this advantage doesn't carry that much weight, and where we get into the late game and forget that this ever happened. But I mean, as far as game openings go, that's pretty bad for the uh, for the Vermac player. God damn! He just got taken up, taken advantage of by that clown card. I mean, what can I say? Um, looks like it's going to be a Panzer Grenadier build here. So double Panzer Grand. Is this a um, this is a uh, infantry company less build here from uh, the Vermac player. So definitely, if there ever was another faction which can sort of be in the same conversation for build diversity um, as the Soviets, it's got to be Vermax. Um, so yeah, you are capable of doing some cool stuff like mixing up compositions, skipping text, doing funky things with Vermax. So yeah, nice to see. Wow, Lendlease. It's going to be Lendlease. Sorry, that's Tank Hunter. My bad. Okay, then. Interesting. Um, I mean, I, there's no way that Forez can know what commander he's up against, right? And there's been no tells, as far as I know. Um, but um, Forez might not know it yet, but I actually think this is quite a strong counterpick to this um, Lightning War Doctrine commander, because if your opponent is going to be relying on, like, a Tiger late game, having the Tank Hunter commander might be useful. Um, 
And the PTAB bombing run is like just noise. I mean, if you ever connect onto a tiger with that, you're feeling pretty good about life. Um, the gun howitzer is just useful on this map. Langriskar, not the biggest map. That gun howitzer, um, Langriskar is not the biggest map. It's also quite a difficult map to flank on. So you can build the gun howitzer like pretty much anywhere you like around here, and it will be able to shoot pretty much anywhere on the map with impunity and be relatively easy to defend. <coughs> So <clears throat> the gun howitzer is nice. Um, do you get uh, you get ambush tactics, which is going to make um, an SU-85 an absolute bastard to get to grips with if you go for one. And we know this is a map that SU-85s really dominate on for the simple reason that an SU-85, a single SU-85, can command all of this open area in the middle of the map just by sitting around about here. Um, so it's very, very, very scary. Yes, this is a real tank hunter map. If there ever was one, this is a good one. Um, and then I suppose you get the PTRSs for your conscripts and the AT grenade package for those. Ooh, okay, a squad of penals here and it's some jeopardy. Gonna throw down a demo charge. <laughs> oh god! I can't. Uh, make it stop! Make it stop! I can't watch. Oh no! <laughs> Uh, right, well, Soviets, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what? All right, so I clicked down there. Initially, things look bad. Six penal battalion, six brave penal battalion members standing fast against like four approaching Axis squads. <laughs> Skipped to like seven seconds later. <laughs> All of the Axis squads are in full retreat and the Panzer Grenadiers are dead and the player has left the game. Okay then. All right. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, right. I think the less said about that game, the better. Not every game is epic. Sometimes people just get off to a bad start and then things get worse. <laughs> it's just funny when it's Soviets, man. It's <laughs> oh no. Ah, uh, right, okay. <sighs> Alright, I've just hopped us into another one here with blind abandon. I didn't even look at the players on the map. Um but I did I did notice it's old mate again. Um so that's good. Um sorry, I'm just I've just got some mission important messages. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> sorry about that. Yeah, I've just um, got to send people some messages and respond to things because it's nearly the end of play today and I want to get those balls rolling today. Anyway, so spawning in the south here, hopefully going to be getting off to better luck than uh, than Russian in the previous game, playing as the blue Vermax pieces. It's going to be Osgiliath. And the map here will be, again, Langrisky. We're going to go for the long pan. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Spawning in the north, playing as the red Soviets. It's going to be old mate. Both of these two players are going to go ahead and pick their commanders inside of the first minute of the game. For old meat, we are going to see partisan doctrine yet again. Um, great. Good stuff. Didn't feel like I quite got my fill of partisan tactics in that first game of the day. Very much glad to see old mate up to his old tricks here. Going to be repping the partisans once again. Osgiliath here going to be going for, I believe this is German infantry doctrine. Yes. The most boringly named commander ever. Uh, so let's take a look here because he's so boring I can't even remember what he gets. You get the 250 half track. Cool, I actually quite like that. Now that it has hull down, it's a fun unit. It's groovy. Stormtroopers. If there ever was a counter partisan unit, it would be these guys. So, okay, this is going to be interesting. Partisans versus stormtroopers. Nice. Veteran squad leader is a very useful ability. Uh, upgrade, I should say. Assault and hold. Um, is something which, to be honest, I'm going to have to assess on the fly because I don't think I've ever really seen it in the wild properly. And Fragmentation Bomb, uh, a very rapid-to-arrive, devastating ability, um, but quite expensive, as I recall. Yeah, 180 munitions. But it is very, very devastating. If you catch out your opponents, um, like, repairing a tank with a couple of squad of engineers or something, this can be super brutal. Um, so... Um, Neither of these two commanders, in my opinion, especially well-suited to this map, but um, neither of them especially bad for this map either. 
and I'm very much looking forward to seeing, hopefully, pardon me, hopefully slightly more of a game than we saw in the last one. Conscript opening here, it will be for old mate. Um, so actually varying up the build a little bit, because I believe last time we saw old mate it was special rifle command into uh, penals with early clown car, so... The commander remains the same. The build, though, going to be very different. And this is the kind of thing I love from Soviets. There's just, right from the get-go, you have transformative choices, um, which both within your commander and outside of the commander. And, like, it's just, you can just play differently. It's, I love it. It's great. Variety is the spice. Um, <clears throat> and the spice must flow. Yes. I'm pretty sure my logic checks out. So... Double MG42 opening here um, for Oz Gilliath, and uh, he has made, managed to make it, no, well, I don't want to speak too soon, but if he can get to the four-minute mark without one of those MG42s being in Soviet hands, then that bodes well for him in this game, let's say that. Um, so this MG42 corners some conscripts, fireman worker pioneers will be heaping on the damage. This is a nice little fight for the Axis forces. The other MG42 right now has been forced back. Looks like conscripts have got Molotovs researched. Okay, wow, so it's going to be a Molotov build here from old mate been a long time since i've seen early molotovs but the cat is out of the bag now as gilliath did see that molotov uh and so he will be mm, aware that the, the molotov tech is a thing that's out there and he needs to watch out for these what are they they're 20 munitions now okay for these 20 munition molotovs being lobbed around the place 250 half track now on the field so this is going to represent quite a difficult proposition for just conscripts and engineers to deal with and i would have thought that because we have early uh um Okay, no, sorry, he can afford anti-tank grenade and some tech. Okay, all right, I see you, old mate. So, yeah, anti-tank grenades are actually going to be on the field just in time to help deal with this. I say just in time. Uh, he could have used one right now, but he's going to have to wait until right now. So, here comes the anti-vehicle grenade. Donk, take that. Um, even getting quite a lot of damage onto the pioneers somehow. Um and so that's really nice medics coming down next and now we've got a support weapon campanaya so yeah old mate is just playing a completely different style this time although the same commander he's now playing a conscript base build with molotovs and uh support weapon campanaya i imagine this is map specific langrosquire is a map that's a little bit smaller than novigrad outskirts uh, and therefore the amount of area covered by your weapon teams is more significant and those weapon teams tend to have to spend less of the time running around the map trying to get to the fight so mm, this is just a map where maxims and zis guns look a little bit better than they did on novigrad outskirts so here we go those are some soviet mines that are perilously close to some german boots um i wish these panzer grenadiers the very best sorry the uh, yeah panzer grenadiers the very best but uh, i fear for them uh, so going up to two squads of Panzer Grenadiers, going for quite an elite mechanized <coughs> style of army here is uh, Oz Gilath. Uh, still no tech, am I right? Still techless from the Axis player. How cool is that that we have this much diversity? Looks like some mines are going to get found here. Whoa, they killed two Panzer Grenadiers and put a ton of damage onto the um, uh, onto the 250 half-track. Yikes. What? That's nuts. That's like best case scenario mines here. Oh no, and then an avalanche of conscripts comes steaming in looking for the anti-vehicle grenade. They're not going to get it, uh, but they might find these panzers. Why do you not fall the panzer grenadiers back? Jesus. Oh god, sorry, I thought that would have been an instant fallback when 12 conscripts sprint up into your hood and you're like the last man standing. It's like, please get me out of here. Um, okay, he will get out of there with that squad, but that could have been an expensive, expensive squad wipe there. A tense moment as uh, those panzer grenadiers get out intact. Mortar squad actually going to be the, the first weapon out here. So um, old mate just doing stuff here. I'm not sure I comprehend his decisions or his tactics, but I am definitely learning as I go. And I'm, you know, convinced that what he's doing is, is probably really cool and definitely the right move. It's just that I'm lagging behind in terms of my understanding of his build. But I suppose if your opponent has double MG42, a mortar squad looks pretty tight, doesn't it? So that's nice. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, he's going to do it. He's going to go mortars. I really like this, actually. An early mortar squad on a map like this is really going to flourish. As long as some Panzer Grenadiers don't get up on top of it. <clears throat> yeah, actually, Panzer Grenadiers as well are quite a high-value unit. So this mortar is, like, very well positioned, actually, to do quite well. And let's not forget, I mean, it's not like the mortars are super expensive. Are they still 240? Yeah, I mean, so there we go. That gets you a pretty accurate, pretty fast-firing six man so relatively durable mortar crew i mean that's a just a, it's a bargain really 
So we'll see what the next unit. Whoops. We'll see what the next unit is being added onto the roster for old mate. Will it be a Zis gun? Will it be a Maxim gun? Will it be none of the above? We'll see. Conscript here in an awkward position. The 250 half track with support. Gonna force them back. Let's take a look at the score line because I haven't really been paying attention. Looks like about a 60 ticket lead right now for his Gilath. So actually. Vermac Force is doing pretty well this game in terms of the uh, the scoreline. And I have to say, in terms of map control generally, although the Soviets have maintained control of the actual center of the map here, which is probably the most important area to control, uh, Axis forces have had relatively decent access to fuel and munitions in this game. And you, nev you never want to let your Axis player be well supplied in terms of fuel and munitions. That, it just makes for a really tough game. So, Panzer Grenadiers are going to get forced out of the east over here. That's going to enable Conscripts to grab this fuel back into Soviet hands. Uh, Axis Clown Car going to be rampaging through the lines here, though. Gets up on top of the Mortar Squad. Partisan Tank Hunters deployed to counter. Boom. Panzer Shrek comes out. So it looks like, yes, they do just get the Panzer Shrek immediately. Not enough munitions for an anti-vehicle grenade here. I'm sure he'd like that, but he's not going to get it. And I don't believe he's going to have another opportunity for a, for a follow-up shot with the Panzer Shrek either. Oh, mines here on the Panzer Grenadiers. Old Mate is just playing such an idiosyncratic style. It was a real pleasure to watch. Oh. Panzer Shrek doesn't quite find that retreating Panzer Grenadier, but that would have been an uh, insult to injury, wouldn't it? Um, so MG42 here will get forced back. Mortars are just raining in. There's just too many dudes here. And that's the kind of cool thing that the Partisan Doctrine lets you do. You can react on the fly by spawning units of dudes with the right tool for the job. And there's not really very many commanders that let you do that. So... It's a cool playstyle, it's a powerful playstyle, uh, but it is balanced. These units are not cheap, and they are incredibly fragile. Uh, partisans just go down fast to pretty much anything. Um, <coughs> pardon me. So let's investigate. <coughs> I'm sorry. So they get the tripwire flares, they get uh, improved accuracy and survivability, okay. And increased lethality when attacking from camo. And increases survivability and whatever. Okay, so, so some fairly bland but useful um, veterancy upgrades there. There's a grenade coming through here. That's quite nice. Bundle grenade there, doing good damage to those conscript. T70 on the queue right now, so Tank of E Battalion Command has finished for our Soviet player. And that's going to force some kind of AT response here out of our still techless Axis player. Hmm. So, what do you do for anti tank? I guess you build Panzer Shreks on your Panzer Grenadiers? Okay, well, he just about has enough munitions to do it. I guess it will work in a pinch, but if he ever loses that Panzer Grenadier squad, it's going to be really painful. Um, and a T-70 is the kind of unit that actually can counterintuitively put together a kill on Panzer Grenadiers with Panzer Shreks. I mean, it doesn't take very many hits um, sometimes for that T-70 to just give a couple of guys and then chase them down on a retreat. So, you know, and it could be partisans coming out of buildings to help with that. So I, I don't think I like just relying on, on Panzer Grenadiers with Shreks to deal with this T-70. Um, I would like to see some tech. Oh, and it looks like um, Osgilleth agrees. He's going straight for support armor core. Sick tech, man. I love it. Now he can have a Stug to deal with the T-70. Oh, yeah. Or like he can just save a bit longer and get an Oscar or a Panzer IV. It's really up to him. I like it. Okay, so the T-70 just comes in hard here. No danger of any mines, it seems like. There's just no mines about. Panzer Shrek here, probably going to get the KO blow onto this uh, onto this 250 half-track. And that will be the unit eliminated from the Axis roster there. Nice work from Old Mate. Cobbles together a kill there on that unit. And now the forces for Osgilleth looking a bit slim on the ground. This is a small but very elite army. And that actually can be a bit of a liability, especially when you're playing against Soviets who are just able to tax your units um, in various nefarious ways. Uh, Ostwin, though going to be the choice and uh, that will counter i mean everything up here in the top right that oswind is going to turn into mincemeat if it can if it gets its like you know turret onto them so i like the pick of oswind would i have preferred a stug i don't know no i think the oswind is just about fine yeah. as long as you don't lose this oswind then you'll look then it looks pretty dopey but <clears throat> actually he has okay he does have a metal detector i was going to say because if we've seen anything from old mate it's that he does very much like to use mines so and indeed there are actually just mines sitting around on the screen as i say that yeah what are, are those telemines okay actually there are telemines on a road here that could definitely get this t70 at some point in the future or another soviet vehicle so watch out for those uh, telemines there um Additional Soviet mines being put down in nefarious places. Very nice. Here comes the Osti. So it's going to announce itself. The first shot off the Osti going to decimate those mines. So very lucky there for Skilleth. Taking a shot at those engineers. And the splash damage going to activate the mines. 
This gun here is going to be the adaptation in the face of this Ostwind, and that of course makes a lot of sense. I like it from Old Mate. That should enable him to, to keep his, slum, his, his hard point here intact without this Ostwind being able to push him out, unless the Ostwind strikes now before the Zisk gun isn't ready. Just waiting right now, it seems, for infantry support to move in. Panzer Grenadier is moving in. MG42 gets set up with a reasonable arc. No units under it right now, though. T70 going to do its best to buy some time in the face of this Ostwin. Panzer Shrek toting Panzer Alert. Sorry, Partisans. Flail a shot in, but it is to no avail. The mortar is forced to GTFO. Now this T70, I imagine, likewise. As there's just too many Axis units on the dance floor here. Looks like um, these telemines were detected and defused by Soviet mines. Bundar grenade going to come through here, but mm, for middling to no effect. I mean, a little bit of damage, but not nothing to write home about. Soviet mines counter-striking there, so that's going to be a decent amount of damage onto those Panzer Grenadiers, forcing them back. And the back and forth continues here. Neither player getting a decisive upper hand, but Osgiliath's uh, scoreline advantage is continuing to mature, and uh, that could very well serve him serve him really well as this game goes on, especially if this Ostwind is able to vet up unchecked. So, yeah, this game basically still at parity, but there's just so much pressure mounting on both players as the rosters just get bigger and bigger, and nobody has really lost anything super meaningful this game. <clears throat> and something's got to give at some point. Triple cap now established for us, Gilleth, so that's really nice. That's brutal. And this MG42. There's this gun kind of in a dicey position. You ideally want this arc to look like this, don't you? I don't know. Seems that way. Smoke grenade going to come... Oh, sorry. Smoke mortar shell's going to counter this MG42 for now. Going to enable some conscripts to ooh, ooh the Ra up on top of this. Uh, I believe we'll see a Molotov. Donk. There we go. But Osgiliath miles ahead of this one. Going to be moving the MG42 out of there. But that's still a win for the Soviet player who basically gets rid of this Axis hardpoint for now. T70 has been repaired. Stormtroopers are out, but there's no Shrek on them yet. I mean, this is kind of, like I said, there's just not very much AT in this in this roster. And as long as the T70 just evades this uh, Ostwind, it still can just butcher Axis soldiers unimpeded, more or less. So MG42 squad, the latest casualty for that T70. MP40 is actually going to be the choice on the um, Stormtroopers, but they get flushed out. A little bit of friendly fire there off of that Soviet mortar catching the T-70 a little. <coughs> they are pushing the middle! Nine! I think what I like from old mate, right, okay, is he... he He's such a... I, I get the feeling that he's actually a very seasoned partisan player because he's not just using partisans willy-nilly. He's not just using them for the sake of using them. He's not just clicking buttons because he can. He's, he's only deploying the partisans when he needs them to patch a hole in his line or, or when he has a really distinct use for them in mind. Um, and obviously that's definitely how they should be used. I'm just saying he's just demonstrating really good competence in that regard. Um... And in this game, you know, he's got ample conscripts to be running the flanks, so he hasn't felt the need to spawn a conscript, uh, a partisan squad just to sort of run up and down flanks, laying mines and, and taking points. <coughs> Whoa, Ostwin getting caught way the hell out here. T70 going to come around into the rear armor, probably to secure the kills. This gun, noise actually. The this gun takes the kill through the front armor. That was a try, like a three-way attack between the T70, the. Uh, um, the, the Zis gun and the Tank Hunter Partisans, really nice there. T-70 also going to clear substantially this S minefield on its way out of town. And uh, that is a crushing blow. A Stug was just finished, which would have been like the perfect complement for that Ostwin. Now it's going to have to serve as the sole armoured reserve for this Axis force. Um... <coughs> wow, what a nice kill to put together on that Ostwin, seemingly out of nowhere. Old mate here, just really good at making moves. I like it. It's really cool. Massive Soviet move out in the western flank here, looking to grab some land. <coughs> Maxim in support of two squads of conscripts represents significant pushing momentum. Is this gun going to creep forwards here? And 
Osgiliath's hold on the midline of the map will be broken, I believe. This is just the momentum that Old Mate needed. 288 under 405. Far from disastrous scoreline, but Old Mate does need to be uh, conscious of that and make sure that he uh, maintains tight control over the victory points as the game goes on now. And Soviet push in the west, so far so good. Standing a little too close to their own Molotov there, but they're going to be okay. Panzer Grenadiers in a building here. MG42 in support. He's going to force these conscripts back for the time being. The Maxim will wear down those Panzer Grenadiers, so... Four kills, nearly two stars of veterancy onto this mortar squad, which has survived since the beginning of the game. T-34 going to be the next fuel spending unit of choice here for old mates. <coughs> And I feel like we, in Old Mate has navigated this game by a different route to about the same point as he was when he had his uh, mechanised regiment Campanaya established in the last game. So T-34s are definitely seeming to be his comfort unit. And whilst I normally don't like to see T-34 first out of the mechanised armour Campanaya, I have to agree that both times I've seen it so far out of Old Mate, it has felt like the right choice. And again here, I think this T-34 is going to be super useful. Because he's up against a struggling Vermax opponent with just a single Stug and between the Zis gun, the anti-tank partisans, the T-70 and the T-34, I feel like that Stug is on thin ice. And Osgiliath here is going to have to have superhuman awareness and micro to keep that thing alive. <coughs> Mines here are going to continue to take their toll, old mate. His, uh, his his tools are brutal, but they are also effective. Gonna additional mines here. It's just nasty stuff out here. T-34 on the field now. The um, Zisk gun's gotten donked up to about half health. It's sitting here a little idle. Going to get a nice shot into the encroaching T-34, but the T-34 strikes back in kind. And now the Stug, one hit away from death, gets a lovely hit on the T-34, and it will probably be able to sneak away. Oh, the T-34 is going to loop de loop around the base. Are you going to loop de loop around the base? Oh, no. No, he's not. Okay. Maybe that was just a risk too far. Panzer Grenadiers, though, whilst all of this is going on, Osgiliath's attention elsewhere. Ah, he's going to lose the Panzer Grenadiers. And this is just another way which Osgiliath can lose this game. It feels like he's actually just under pressure from so many angles. And, like, losing core infantry, he just can't afford to be replacing these squads. Like, Panzer Grenadiers are 360 manpower. Um, and he just can't really afford to be replacing them. He has, however, managed to save up for a Panzer IV. And once that hits the field, the dynamic will change a little bit. That Panzer IV is a mobile, hardy threat, which will be the kingmaker on the field. But, I, oh man, I mean, it's, there's only going to be a small window of time where that Panzer IV is, is going to be the kingmaker on the field before there's two T-34s, at which point that Panzer IV cannot operate nearly so freely. So, was Gilleth still under the pressure here? There are telemines in this position here. I'm just having a quick scan around for mines. So the Soviet mines there... Mm. Okay, so Old Mate knows about the Panzer IV, of course, because, as we just heard, that was the radio intercept. Alrighty. Panzer IV out. Are these more mines coming down? Wow, these mines are very defensively placed. Okay, so Panzer IV gets deployed out on the western flank, announces itself pretty quickly. MG42 pintle mount on the way for that unit. Uh, Maxim gun getting a little bit jammed up on it, but we'll be able to exfiltrate safely here. And that may well break the Soviet control of the western flank. Uh... Pioneers here going to be leading the charge across the middle. T T-70 going to respond to police that advance. And now we've got our first, like, big battle coming down here as forces in all sections of the map are going to be engaging each other. We we'll see this is going to be an important phase of play here. The two T-34s, though, crucially, on reserve. Oh, no, Panzer, Panzer Grenadiers get crushed in the building. Zisk gun barrage here, super sneaky. God damn, it's hard to play against Soviets, man. They've just got so many things, so many buttons they can press. And if you, if you, if you don't... You know, if you miss one thing, if you if you if one of the plates that you have to keep spinning falls off, then you just you lose your units and stuff just looks terrible. I mean, smart Soviet players are horrible to play against, aren't they? Like, imagine trying to micro all these Axis units against superior Soviet units. I mean, I mean, like, 
they're just six man they're more durable they, they seemingly seem to have like more veterancy and you know there's maxims it feels like an uphill battle for this german infantry and then just for a second you're not looking at the at the panzer grenadiers in this building and they just get flumped down by a barrage off the zis gun i mean oh god it's like it's nightmare it's a it's nightmare circumstances conditions is the word i'm looking for out here so okay uh tank hunter panzer uh, tank hunter partisans try but unable to find a shot on the t on the um, panzer 4 t-34 will find a, a hit in there um old mate for now looks like he's just saving up for whatever his next fuel choice unit is going to be another t-34 is probably going to be fine if he feels like he wants to take a very safe line he could get a, an su-85 that would be acceptable a katusha would also be fine around about now um now the triple cap is established for the red army still something of a scoreline cushion here for his gilath so i mean he does have some time to work with but believe me these tickets are going to evaporate in a heartbeat here i feel like and then before we know it as gilath is going to be right up against the clock unless he can break out onto the map relatively soon mortar squad going to be getting introduced for his gilath i think i quite like that um it's Langrisskar is quite a small map. That GR34 can be profitably firing even from like here or here. Like it can just be shooting pretty much all the time. So that seems fine. Again, though, old mate, these radio intercepts just creeping on into the ears of the Soviet players. He knows that there's a mortar out there now, so he can just start debunching any units that are particularly clustered and making sure that with those first mortar shells aren't going to take him by surprise. Um, it's just nice information to have. Stug going to creep forward here. We'll find a T34. No. Okay. I take it back. T-34 going to come forward here using this line of sight blocker. Pioneers are going to be up all over this tank, but they do not have a Faust. Um, Urar and Conscripts over here in the west going to get up on top of this. And this is it. You know, if you're not paying attention for a split second, Conscripts, they'll Urar in, they'll donk a tank, or they'll set a unit on fire, and then, yeah, oh, that's really bad. Okay, Katusha actually was the next fuel unit of choice here for Old Mate. I think that makes a lot of sense. That's going to add substantial amounts of pressure to a skiller. And Langriskaya has always been a map. But Katusha's have felt really good. Um, Katusha, I mean, the range on a Katusha can basically hit anywhere on Langrisky fairly safely. And if you get close enough for a short range barrage, your opponent's infantry is often clustered up enough that it's, you know, super brutal. So, anyway, T70 now at three stars, just churning its way through Axis infantry. Conscripts here going to fall back just in the nick of time here. Old mate just seemingly on top of everything at the moment. Playing a lovely game here. And who am I to complain? I mean,. Okay, ooh, okay, Stug here on attack ground rounds. Gets his second star of veterancy. To armored skirts are up on that bad boy now, so that's nice. Uh, that's going to force the T-34 out. That's going to enable the Panzer IV to come in here and push back all the Soviet armor. These guys desperately in need of repairs now. And uh, buying himself some time. Crucially able to hang on to one of the VPs. So the bleed rate now, kind of okay. I mean, you never want to be bleeding, but at least it's acceptable right now. 241 under 269. Close game on the scoreline. And Osgiliath, at this rate of bleed, has a lot of time to stabilize. So as long as he can hold on to this VP, it's kind of okay. I mean, definitely not over. So, okay, the Katusha comes forward. Where is it? Comes very far forward. Ooh, careful, mate. All right, Stug going to come in here. Oh, there's just been a T-34 eating away at the base defenses. Um, I hope that old mate doesn't forget about this. He could use an aim weak spot around here to stun the tank. Okay, he's not gonna. That's a bit lucky. Katusha is very close here. The Stug! Oh, Katusha, get out of here, bro! Oof. Man, old mate. Fearless with that Katusha. Wants to find the correct barrage. That would be an okay barrage. But he has no eyes on this area. He could use Spy Network. Oh, he's already used it! He knows! He knows exactly where these Axis units are. Ha ha! There we go, old mate. Just making me want to give this commander a go. This is so cool. T-34 going to lumber forwards here. Stug, though. This has been a great Stug. Might trade well. Oh, still a... Ugh, look, the rate of fire, the accuracy, the penetration. The Stug is a real brute. The Panzer IV sharking round. Wants to be relevant here, but it's not going to. Katusha takes a barrage. Finds a couple of Pioneer squads. Nothing to write home about. Whoa, they're a little slow to scatter. So like, another one goes down on the next bit of the barrage. But this is, this is acceptable. This is not a game-ending or not even a particularly effective opening barrage. Four kills, a little bit of veterancy. That's okay. That's okay for a skiller. Obviously, you'd rather it wasn't raining rockets, but given that it is, that's about as about the best case scenario there. Our enemy has only two hundred points. And uh, GR thirty four going to be putting down smoke in this position. Oh, I suppose that's going to enable these stormtroopers to get in and try and sneak this position from under the nose of a Maxim. 
Oppo no, but the conscripts just out DPSing these um, these guys, and I suppose the uh, the Zisk gun barrage is certainly helping with that. And now we're going up to a third T34. And I mean, there's no sign of Schwer Panzer HQ, is there? So, so that's okay. You can get by on T34s just fine for now. You know, if there was the prospect of a Panther or something on the horizon, then this T34 looks a little bit soggy. But up against a Stug and a Panzer IV, this is absolutely fine. And look how good I have to say, old mate has been about micring these T34s. Have we seen an old mate T34 go down today? I don't think we have. Oh yeah, we did actually. I think we saw one in the first game go down. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so second Panzer IV is here. This is turning into quite the medium armor battle. This is sort of a very atypical looking late game that we're moving into now. Uh, 188 and ticking right now for Osculus. Actually, no, I take it back. Oh, about to be ticking. So here's the uh, the fresh Panzer IV coming out into the south. Meanwhile, in the middle of the map, the Stug trying to get its teeth into the T-34s, but the Ziskan keeping it in check. The Stug on one hit. Now T-34 is going to roll forward, looking for the shot. Doesn't find it. Panzer, falls foul of some mines. That's unfortunate. It's going to have to retreat there. Should be okay. Taking fire from a T-34. Goes up to two-star vet, though. We'll secure it at the armoured skirts. The Panzer IV in the south gets about with no damage on it, actually, despite facing off against a number of Soviet um, tanks there. Oh, has this T-34 overextended? The Stug is still up. He's overextended. That'll be a T-34 going down. Okay, old mate. We didn't need to lose that unit. And I think that's the first genuine mistake I've seen from old mate. That was an overextension there for sure. Immediately he has the money and the unit cap to replace that. But there's going to be a window of time here where he's down to two T-34s. And that is kind of bad, actually. Two T-34s against a Stug and two Panzer IVs is not a great fight for the Soviet armor. Um, and uh, he's forced to give up control over West. And this will be another victory point slipping into... I say another... The first victory point slipping into Axis hands here. Oh my god, this bleed rate has just been getting quite extreme. Katusha is going to fire. Where are we firing? Into the base? Okay, old mate. I'm going to go ahead and say that's also a mistake. This is a speculative barrage. I mean, like, objectively, anytime you can, like, hit your opponent's base, you know you're hitting for damage because you're going to hit buildings and stuff, but unless you've just forced a load of their units back, that's the correct time to fire into the base because then there's a load of like wounded squads chilling out here trying to repair and reinforce. But that wasn't the case. There were no squads waiting here. So I think that that Katusha Barrage just honestly a Hail Mary, like a, a freebie for Osgiller. Um, so Old Mate here possibly getting a bit impatient. We'll have to see. It's too early to say that he's impatient so far, but um, just a couple of decisions over the last sort of couple of minutes here, which I would question. Panzer IV here going to be attack grounding through this through this hedge. Conscript's getting a face full of shrapnel here. They probably want to move. Partisans, partisans, partisans. Really interesting game this one has been. Three star stug. Love it. With no kills. <laughs> that has been a tank hunter stuck. Oh, rifle grenade claiming a conscript. That is actually cost effective for the Soviets. Wow, T 34 going to take a dive into the base here. Risk. Could get cut off. Now the Katusha's going to take a barrage when there are units in the base. I, I reckon that's hitting here. Oh, no. Again, though, he puts it here. Oh, okay, he gets the medical bunker. All right, that's something. That's annoying to replace. That is 200 manpower and 60 munitions that you'd really rather not have to spend, not to mention the time on one of your engineer squads, your pioneers. So that's kind of annoying. That is actually annoying. Still not the best barrage here. Okay, another T-34 going to go down. Just feeding on into this Stug, who still hasn't got a kill. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, you don't want to lose that. I think now is an appropriate time to get an SU-85 because your opponent has two Panzer fours. Uh, can you actually fit one into the unit cap, though? No. Hmm. Okay, well, he's going to go for another T-34. I, I just I don't know. It's precarious, but... Another T-34 is preserving the status quo in this game. It's preserving the current down. Whoa, the T this T-70 will be lost. And that has no business being there. Whoa, the Stug just not quite traverse. There we go. All right. Okay, now get an SU-85 because you have a unit cap. Cancel this, get an SU-85. That's got to be the plan here because you're up against two pounds of fours and a three-star Stug. I'd see an SU-85 has the range, has the stopping power, has the... How can I put it? The, the dissuading... It, it has the control you need to make your Axis opponent not use their Panzer fours very aggressively. And that will enable you to control the victory points and win this game out, in my opinion. So, I, you know, he's going to go for this S if he's going to go for this T-34. And it may well be fine. I just think that now we're at the point where an SU-85 would have been superior over that one. But here comes the T-34. And we're going to see how it's going to fare on this battlefield. Double cap... Oh, yeah, but double cap about to get established here for old mate. There we go. So, Oskilov once again under the gun. 93 tickets and counting under 269. Um, has a reasonable army, decent veterancy, okay equipment, uh, and, and a fine stug here. Ooh, hang on though, the stug getting caught out a little bit. Those skirts though, providing much needed protection from a Panzer. Sorry, from a T-34 in the flank. Okay, so whoa, two t two T-34s just going down, I believe. No, sorry, one going down. Okay, we need an SU-85 out here. The armor battle is slipping out of control. The German armor is betting up so quickly. These T-34s are not providing very much value before they go down. Uh, the Zis gun here is also going to go down. This is a hard AT unit to lose. This is a unit of hard AT to lose. So, yeah, we need the SU-85. But now there's no fuel because we already spent it on T-34s. And actually, old mate, the situation is shifting here. Axis forces pushing hard. The battle line falling apart for old mate. An attempt to remount the Zis gun is going to end in disaster as those conscripts are also going to die. And now another T-34 feeding into the teeth of these Axis armored units. The Stug is going to reposition here. It's so fast to traverse. It's so fast at the rate of fire. And that gun is lethally potent against these T-34s. So he, needs to, he is on thin ice now, these Soviet mediums. He is in a very precarious position. Whoa, this Panzer IV now overextending, though. The, Zis, the second Zisk gun is here. Katusha going to be angling forward for shots here. The Armored Skirts Panzer IV comes through to challenge from the side. He's going to lose a Panzer IV. Yeah, I don't know why he was overextending with that Panzer IV. That was a mistake there. Handing a Panzer IV is ex over to Old Mate is exactly what Old Mate needed. MV42 probably going to die here as well. There it goes. Katusha here just still chilling, has a barrage, waiting to go. Could try and get this Stug, actually, now that he he does know where that is, right? Uh, he he must have seen it. I feel like some of these infantry would have seen it. That would be a sweet target. Uh, oh, no. The other the other Panzer IV gets hunted down. Oh, that's so unfortunate. So unfortunate. The Telemines! The Hail Mary Telemines! Oh, my goodness. No way. Oh, my goodness. That Panzer IV is totally on fire and everything, but it still works. Wow. And now the Katusha fire is going to be used to deny uh, Axis boots on mid. Uh, but not very effectively, actually. A little too close, actually. The spread on those missiles is just too narrow. Uh, now surely would be a great time for the to Panzer tank, uh, partisan tank hunters to come out of this building, but he doesn't have the manpower. Oh, this is actually turning into a much closer endgame than it, than it needed to have been, I feel like. The enemy armor has engaged us! Nine! Okay, so the, um, you know, Osgiliath has enough money here for another Panzer IV. Frag bombing run. Okay, frag bombing run finds the tank and the engineers. Didn't get any squad wipes. A um, little unfortunate, but definitely buying some time here where that tank is going to take a lot longer to repair. The engineers have to run for it and reinforce. The tank's going to have to scurry on out of there. So... Not exactly valueless, that frag rub on them. Okay, now we're up to two Panzer fours and a Vet 3 Stug. I mean, if, if Osgiliath can just stabilize in the next couple of minutes, he's probably going to be all right. One of the VPs is in Axis hands. Mid VP could be captured any time now. Oh god, the Zisk gun finds these stormtroopers. Oh, yikes. And he's still bleeding. He just needs to capture these points. He knows it. 
Where's the Soviet water tube? 13 kills, 3 stars of veteran. See that thing raining death. Okay, old mate, literally, you have to save. Please don't buy another T-34. It won't be good enough. You need an SU-85, mate. Two T-34s do not fare too much better than one T-34 against the three-star Stug and two Panzer IVs. Like, it's still just a point you can't deal with. You need a game-changer in that department, and that, that is the SU-85. That is that one. And then you can, you know, you've, you've got Mark Target, which pairs up very nicely with the SU-85. So, I'm, you know, I'm just saying... I think that it's time for the tank destroyer. Look at this! Who would have thought that Osgillith would have managed to maneuver the game into this position? Even just a few minutes ago, it looked so bad, but this is the world we live in. This is the timeline we're experiencing, and things are actually kind of looking okay right now. 41 tickets, okay, but under a triple cap now is old mate. And uh, we've not been able to say that for a long time in this game. Panzer IV in the west gets its third star of veteran. See, these, these, these German medium units are starting to look really scary, man. Please get a T-34. I'm oh, sorry. No, please get an SU-85. Okay, that's the sound of the Katusha. It's going to find the mortar squad. Erg. And they will die. Conscripts get up on top of this VP and they will decap it, so that's a meaningful advance. But they're getting gunned down by this Panzer IV. You can't be hemorrhaging your core infantry, not when manpower is the limiting variable here. Get these conscripts out of there. Yep, okay, good. It does look like he is saving for the SU-85, which I am pleased with. SU-85. The adaptation has been made. Now all he has to do is not cancel it before it's built. <laughs> There's still a way to screw this up. Oh my god, and Osgillith is actually playing into this. A third Panzer IV. I mean, this this is risk again now. Three Panzer IVs, actually, it's not very difficult to kill an SU-85. You just swarm it down. But if you fail and that SU-85 picks off even one of them or starts vetting up in any significant way, those tables turn so quickly... So as long as old mate nurses this SU-85 and doesn't let anything happen to it, he's going to be fine. Also, you are allowed to purchase additional SU-85s. Controversial, I know, but you are. There is no Geneva Convention provision or anything against uh, additional SU-85s being purchased. And when your opponent's primary strength lies in this line of units here, Stug, Panzer IV, Panzer IV, Panzer IV, two SU-85s, is not only appropriate, it is expedient. So, um, I, I just think, oh yeah, it's announcing itself with a shot. So look at that, it's a quarter of a level of veterancy. Boom, right there. Now all he has to do is just keep it under wraps. Gonna pick off one of the, one of the Panzer IVs nicely there. Mark vehicle has come down. Um, although I think that was on the one that was destroyed, so, okay. Um, and able to stall the scoreline situation once more here. Red, white, and blue, gonna be the, uh, the scenario. On, on the VPs for now. And this is just a close game. And I'm liking what I'm seeing. Katusha gonna take additional barrages. Finds an MG42 and some stormtroopers. A little bit unlucky there for the uh, German player. Osgillis. Oh no, he will lose the MG42. And that MG42 was keeping conscripts off of this point. So that's very important here. The Katusha really paying out now 19 kills nearly up to two stars of veterancy well you know on its way substantially and it's just all coming together for old mate the axis roster is depleted it is in jeopardy it is not very well balanced there was a moment where he had three pounds of fours and a stug and he might have been able to break the su-85 but already having lost a pounds of four that's so much more difficult to do Ugh, that SU-85 can just strike with impunity from so far away, smiting these Axis mediums. This is its natural habitat. This is an SU-85 in the wild, doing what it has been evolved over millions of years to do. A finely honed killing machine. Nature's final form of tank destroyer. Finds additional Axis units here. Oh no, the SU-85 is in the panzer nest. 
It is in the panzer pen. It is hounding them down. <laughs> this is getting a bit gross now. This... This is the SU-85 we needed, but hang on now. He's a bit slow to react. Axis unit's closing in on it. He's still not pulling it back, despite this stug. He's just going to try and take the fight. That's so risky. He should have kited there, for sure. There's no advantage at... What is he doing with this SU-85? Kite! Kite, my son! Oh, God. He's... Well, if he hands over the SU-85 now... Okay, well, that's, like, the one thing he had to not do. We are Oh no, now he's gonna now he feels compelled to feed in a T-34 into this. Where's the Zis gun? Oh no, it's not manned, so you fed in this T-34 for free. Oh, what are we doing? It was all in the bag, and then we just threw away the SU-85. I just oh no. Oh no. Okay, he does pick it up off of the tank hunter partisans. Yikes, but he threw away so much of his army for that. For those of you who were in doubt, you can no longer be three-star stugs are they just are dps they fire so quickly and their shots basically always hit for damage like all against almost any target except the heaviest of armor um and that su-85 it makes no difference really to the su-85 whether it's taking the fight from further away or in the stugs range you know that su-85 is just as long as it's taking shots it's happy he picks up the panzer here and this game will end soon i think but um yeah the, uh, i mean just i don't really understand the microing decisions there that that's that stug was just firing that su-85 and he even repositioned it but like not kiting it back you just that su-85 needed to kite there as it is i think he's going to be okay soviet forces there's just not enough access left in this game one panzer four not a lot of infantry uh and uh you know with the leftovers as it were old mate here just with substantially more stuff he's lost his katusha in there as well actually i missed that um and it, I believe it will be a Soviet victory. 14 tickets and counting here. But this was a lot closer than it needed to have been. Okay, so that's going to be a triple cap, right? Oh, no, sorry. Well, uh, down to three. But that is game. He's not going to be able to do anything about these other VPs. Wow. What a game. 44 minutes, 52 seconds, and I'm going to go ahead and say that that, that was like two-thirds almost a perfect game by Old Mate, and then just in the last sort of phase of the game, um, the last third of the game perhaps, just a couple of strange decisions coming in, and it began when he fed in one of his T-34s, and then shortly after something else happened, and I was just like, is he getting impatient? Um, and then after that, there were just a couple of other questionable decisions, but the most important decisions old mate made all of them correctly and there was also a moment there where he'd lost a substantial volume of his armor and t-34s and i think a lot of soviet players would have just doubled down on building more t-34s but you have to recognize there comes a point where those t-34s are not scoring you any value um, when your opponent has three panzer fours and a three star stug it's like there's just no amount of t-34s that are going to help that well i mean there is but it's not an amount that you can build um, and correctly identifying when to make the transition from T-34s to the SU-85 was massive. And even though that SU-85 actually didn't go on to live very long or get very many stars of veterancy, it still won the game because it killed that Panzer IV and it established a phase of dominance over the middle of the field where the Axis player felt significantly desperate. And there's no reason that SU-85 had to die there. There really wasn't. Um, so that was surprising, if I'm honest, given the state of the rest of Old Mate's play, which was really tight. I am surprised he lost that SU-85 there. But in the end, able to navigate this game through to, through to a much-deserved win. Um, honestly, mostly just using partisan doctrine as a safety net, and I think that's probably the smartest way to use it. Just don't, don't, don't feel you have to click any of these buttons. Just get the information from the radio intercept use that very safely use 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 spy network when when it's important like when you're lining up katusha shots or just when you want to know what your opponent's up to there's a number of times when that's very useful to, to be able to do mark vehicle is generally very useful and if things get really dire and a panzer four is plowing through your lines or if you need to get that final hit on something um you know or if you want to get the get the drop on a marksman or a weapon team in a way that's going to change the outcome of battle then you have these fantastically versatile very useful squads which used judici ju judiciously and in the right circumstances are not that expensive 
and provide an immense amount of utility and a really good safety net and an old mate just demonstrating that in two of our games today just using those partisans not in a transformational style he's not making a big deal about picking this doctrine just using them um to smooth over any rough edges in an otherwise very well-rounded um soviet style uh, and old mate also d displaying considerable build diversity despite using the same commander using a special rifle command opening in one game and then uh, using a, uh, a, um, a support weapon campanile opening in another game um, and just making them both look absolutely fine really nice stuff uh, making some adaptations based on his opponent's composition making some adaptations based on the map all hallmarks of a smart and capable player and uh, i'll definitely be looking out for old mate on the ladder in the future osgiliath well unfortunately not going to take this one very interesting style loved the techless opening that was very exciting to see um i loved most of the decision making and things but he was basically on the back foot from the early stages in this game and just never quite able despite coming very very close never quite able to break this soviet position and as ever with Langraskaya, it often becomes a story of whoever holds this area of the map just wins this is the high ground and it commands basically two-thirds of the map um so this is the most important area to hold um if there is a single area that is most important so yeah um uh, fair to say as well this commander not really doing very much stormtroopers never felt that impactful the fragmentation bombing run did something but still was it 180 munitions worth of value i don't know the 250 half track very nice in the early stages of the game but was it actually impactful could that van power have been equally impactful spent on another unit probably i'm gonna go ahead and say probably uh, and we, I, I just wasn't really that conscious of uh, the squad ma the five-man squad upgrade uh, squad leader being that impactful or used used on very many of the squads in this game so i'm going to go ahead and say another commander might actually benefit this style a little bit better or perhaps benefit this map a little bit better i, I for, for whatever reason this commander not doing it for me on this map or indeed to be honest generally i've yet to see this commander really sort of wow me um so uh yeah wow three very entertaining games today nice to see some soviet victories i'm not gonna lie um and uh yeah yeah had a great time casting these games the machine seems stable we are on the uh what are we on now build v mark four of this computer and the additional pieces still to go in so still more modifications to be made but at least she's running stably now we fixed all of the cmos errors the bios is fine um everything seems to be running smoothly once again so that is very good hooray um yay well i guess that will do it for now thank you very much for watching this for now magpie 842 signing out